quiffer that Mrs. Rawdon and Yelpin like a pack of hounds on the scent of an old fox. You're not crying again, are you? Oh, no, no. There's something in my eye. Dust, I think. You'd better leave that to me. In case you've forgotten, dust is something I'm an authority on. Now then, look up. Ah, oh, there it is. Yeah? You got half Dublin in your eye. Now, more of a grab on. Well? Now, what do you mean, well, Mrs. O'Flynn? I should have warned you, Mr. Rooney, that she'd be angling for your sympathy. She'd got something in her eye. So, she's something in her eye. And I'd be bound that's not the only tale of woe she's been telling you. What's that I can smell? Peppermints. Grandfather! Grandfather! What's the matter? It's Grandfather. He's disappeared. Huh. Up to his old tricks again. He'll be back when the pub's shut. I don't mind, Harry. Where does he usually go? I don't know. It's the first time he's been out of the house for months. He's not well enough. I don't worry. We'll find him. I go on, Tom. I shouldn't have given him the money. I can't understand it. It's not like him to do anything without telling me. I'll go. Mr. Timothy O'Flynn live here. Yes. We brought him home to you. Drunk, I suppose. No, ma'am. Exhausted. We found him on a ranch in Stevens Green. Grandfather. It's all right, Nora. I'm just a bit tired, that's all. Help me off with him, then go round for the doctor. I'm looking a bit better now, but you gave us all a terrible fright, you know. Ah, uh, there's, there's life in the old dog yet. Where did you go? Oh, uh, just for a bit of a stroll. Uh, nowhere in particular. Well, mind you, don't do it again. The doctor says you're to be kept very quiet. Bye now. I'll be back with you the minute I've finished work. Hurry now and finish your breakfast or you'll be late. Mother, I've been thinking of asking James to be my partner at the office dance. Of course, I'll have to have a new dance dress. I'm sick of that old rag I've been wearing. You do look for the kind you haven't paid for the last one yet. Look at all these bills that have come in. The gas bill, the electric light bill. Cold bill will be next. Oh, Kurt from Sheila. She's having a wonderful time in London. She sends her love to all. There's one for you.
was I going down O'Connor Street after me lunch back to the office. And there was she across the road, going into the Gresham Hotel with a man. Ah, don't be ridiculous. You've been drinking. A, a single solitary half pint. Who was the man? Oh, I couldn't tell that. He had his back to me. But I recognized Moira anywhere. I was so shook I came straight back here when the office closed to find out what's going on. That's what I'd like to know. There was a letter came for her this morning. She wouldn't say what was in it. Ah. She's here. But she's coming up back. You should see her. You've never seen anything like Bring them in here, please. Hello, everyone. Just put them there on the table. Right. Thank you. You can keep the change. Oh, thank you, miss. And where might you have been? Shopping. You mean you didn't go to work? Oh, yes, I called in. I've arranged to take a month off. I want to see grandfather's properly looked after. We've been getting a bit worried about you, Moira. Oh, there's no need. I'm fine. I knew it. I knew it. You've been drinking. I've had two sherrys, and I feel as though I were walking on air. I'm glad to hear, Tom. I bought this for Bridget. Look, it walks. Well, you shouldn't have done it, Moira. It must have cost the earth. I'd want to know where the money came from before I'd ever touch anything of hers. I have a present for Rax, too. At least he won't ask me how I paid for it. Yes, it fits. Oh, Rax, you're not going to thank the lady. Mrs. O'Flynn. But I think you'd do well to keep your mind clean. Come on, Rex. Boys, the drinks are on me. For it's an honor to my house. Wasn't it here that Mr. Doolan saw Rooney that day and said to himself, this is the boy for me. And now, he's playing in the final. I shall not tell history is made. It's all a matter of chance. There's Napoleon having a quiet point one day when in walks Josephine, and before he knows where he is, he's lost the Battle of Waterloo. Tim, boil up. Name it, Rooney. The best in the house. The same. Good luck, Rooney. That's all. Thanks. Thanks, thanks Lance. Thanks. This was a celebration. What's the matter with you? Oh, they're all the same. Well, uh, women. I have nothing to do with them. That's the sensible thing. Oh, don't worry. You'll never catch me making a fool of myself about any woman. Oh, listen to the fella. He's like a cock outside a cage of hands, crowing because he's out and longing to be in. <laughs> <laughs> well, hello there. Well, you certainly left the owl girl hopping mad, huh? Look, I'm not interested. It's nothing to do with me. Oh, isn't it now? Well, there's Moira comes home, half tiddly and all, dolled up like a dog's dinner, and refusing to say where she got the money from. Well, what's that got to do with me? Well, now, you didn't seem uh, a bit surprised about it, and uh, the inference is that she got it from a man. And the old girl says that, well, she caught the two of you together the other night. What? Well, now, you're a, a fine, upstanding young fella. And, well, I wouldn't put it past you. There, you'll take that back. <laughs> put me down. You, you have me half choked. Sure, wasn't, wasn't I only kidding you? Well, don't, don't we all know that you're scared stiff of anything in a skirt? Yeah, what are you ah, Listen, listen, have it whatever way you like. Sure, sure, I was only trying to apologize. Look, come on, have it, John. Huh? Ah, come on now. And, and, and what do your friends have? Come on, drink up there, fellas. And let's make a big night of it, huh? Oh, yeah, my boy. I'll take you home again, Kathleen. To your heart. Rex, you've been drinking. Yes, come on. I'll take you home.
quiet, Tim. You don't want me thrown out now, do you? Indeed, I do not. Haven't I had enough moving him around from one place to another? Then you'll oblige me by holding your row and not be making a disturbance. Do you hear me? Take her down. Give me the stick. Go on, boy. I'll take you home. Shh. Quiet or I'll crease you. Now. Thanks, Tim. You know, you were always a true friend to me. There's no man whose advice I value more. Do you hear me? Yeah. Say no more. Yeah. Say no more. I'll take you home again, Kathleen. <laughs> 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 Sorry to hear that. I hope I didn't disturb the old fellow last night when I came in. Oh, no, no. He'd taken a sleeping pill. I didn't say anything to anyone, did I? Oh, yes. You said quite a lot. The trouble was, 
You didn't seem to be sure who you were saying it to. Well, do you remember what it was I said? Your mind seemed to be running on love and marriage. You were in what you might call an affectionate mood. Mrs. O'Flynn was very interested in your views. Oh, no. You'd had an awful lot to drink. Well, whatever it was I said, I don't remember or even want to. A man in drink always makes a fool of himself. I suppose he does. First, please. What's the matter with you this morning, Mother? You're wandering about as though you're in a dream. It's only bits of girls like you said, Tori, that live in dreams. They say, of course, it's natural in a young fatherless girl to go casting her eye on a man much older than herself. What on earth are you talking about, Mother? James and I... We had a little talk together last night. Oh, there's the doctor. How is he, doctor? Oh, he's very weak. There's very little I can do from now, I'm afraid. I'm sure it'll be a great relief to him when he departs from us. Yes. Maybe you're right there. Goodbye. Rooney, quick. Grandfather's collapsed. He tried to get out of bed, and I can't lift him. There's been one here all the time. <laughs> the larger and the better. I hear you're playing in the final. It's only a few days away now. Well, good luck to you. I used to be a bit of a hurler myself when I was a lad. You must try and sleep. We'd better be saying good night now. I've enjoyed myself the last few days. That one and all the rest of them wondering where you got your money from. And you not saying a word. An old uncle left it to me. Do you know where I went that day? The day of the wedding? No. To the lawyers. If she'd known it was from me, she'd have had me life. a little tucked away. Two hundred pounds. You shouldn't have done it, Grandfather. I wouldn't have touched it if I'd known. I know that. That's why I did it the way I did. It's been wonderful of seeing you. Looking young and lovely in there. By the way, Still owe you five shillings. I just came to say how sorry I am I won't be at the funeral to pay my last respects. Doesn't seem right I should be playing in a game this afternoon. He wouldn't begrudge you. I had a great heart, God rest his soul. Like yourself. Um, maybe this isn't the time to be telling you, but... Uh, I'm leaving this place. I just can't stay on. I can understand that. You know, you'd best be doing the same. That's the advice of a friend. It's my home. Wait. I only want you to...
you to know that... Uh, well, if there's anything I can ever do for you... You'd better be going before they come. Good luck. Well, thanks. Well, I'll be seeing you after the match. salted away. You spoke to Mr. Dolan? I did. He's coming himself as soon as the match is over. Then we'll know what there is and where it's gone. After all, you and Sheila were his own flesh and blood. He doted on you when you were children. And he still did, no matter how certain persons tried to turn him against you. I never heard of him making a will, mind you. In which case, it's the next of kin that'll benefit. For heaven's sake, stop talking about his money. It's little enough you did for him when he was alive. You might try to respect him now he's dead. That's true enough. It's drinking to his memory we should be. also foresaw that possibility. Shortly before his death, he instructed us to assign all monies entrusted to our care to uh, a certain quarter. Well, can you beat that? I knew the old devil wasn't penniless. Where did it go? 
Who was it got it from him? Or if it's gone where I think, I'll take it to the highest courts in the land for exerting undue influence on a half-witted old man. I'm afraid you'll encounter difficulties, Mrs. O'Flynn. The deceased requested that the certain party to which the monies went be kept secret. The wishes of the dead should be sacred, Mrs. O'Flynn. <laughs> he has you there right enough. It might have gone to a dog's home for all you'll ever know. Uh, there remains, however, a certain tangible assets. The lease of the house, furniture, personal effects, etc. At least they go to my daughters. I'm afraid not. The deceased made a deed of gift covering all of them. His personal effects, including his gold watch, have been assigned to Mr. Tom Riley. With the proviso that they be sold and the monies be invested in the purchase of Irish whiskey to be consumed annually on the anniversary of his death. No man shall ever say that I fail to respect the wishes of the dead. The deceased did not forget you, Mrs. O'Flynn. He deposited a sum of money with us to ensure you a supply of peppermint sweetmeats, which he refers to as humbugs. Humbugs? I go. The furniture and the lease of the house have been assigned to Miss Moira Hogan. So that's what you've been up to. Playing on the sympathies of a daft old man, scheming his own flesh and blood out of what little he's left. It's not my affair, Mrs. O'Flynn, but I think it might be wiser to be a little more civil to your landlady. My landlady? Miss Hogan, should she wish, can turn you out in the streets or sell the lease over your head. You see my point? It's the police. They say they've come with a warrant. I just dumped my bag. They were all set for the celebrations. Right, Mr. Don't be long. Don't be long. While we're waiting, we'll have a jar. Yeah. Here. Yeah. Hey, boy, we won. We beat them. We're the champions. Oh, the disgrace. I knew all along. I warned all of you. We'll never live this down. Rudy, it's Moira. What about her? She's been arrested. She's in jail right this moment. Now we know where the money came from. She's one of a gang of thieves. Have you gone mad? There's solid evidence against her. She was caught with the proceeds of a robbery, a necklace. She took me to have the class mended and the jeweler phoned the police. Red and she was caught. A necklace? You mean five little red beads hanging from a tin affair? That tin affair is platinum, and those stones are worth a small fortune. But I gave it to her. You did? So you're in it too. I knew it. I knew the first minute I set eyes on you that you were up to no good. Your place, the bricks. The bricks? You mean the buckles? I mean the bricks, the bricks, and things we get out of the bin. Give up! Are you going to make a statement? Then you leave me no alternative. I'll have to commit you to the cells and bring you before the court in the morning. Are you sure they're all here, Mrs. Henderson? Every one of them in the box that came in. Thank you. Good luck in your trouble, Mr. Rooney. Our trouble, you mean. We're all in this. It's what we've always been warned against. Stealing by finding. Why still not say that what's in the bin is any man's property? I shut sure up. Where to now? Mrs. Manning French. Give her. Give her. Give her. Sorry to trouble you, Sergeant, but I want to see the officer in charge. 
Is that so? What's it all about? Rooney! Well, if it isn't Rooney himself, that was a powerful game you played today. Come in, boys, and have a look who's here. And up on the game you played. They are just the game. They are the game. They are the game. Arrest these men on the charge of kidnapping. They took my grandchildren. You're a wonder, Rooney, my boy. Carried them off in broad daylight in front of my very eyes. Then it's a queer place they brought them to, man. Inspector, I must have a word with you. Delighted, my boy. Delighted. Come into the office. Inspector. What is it this time, Mrs. Madison? I must insist that you arrest these men at once. Just state your complaint to the officer at the desk, madam, and everything will be attended to. She's the bane of my life, that woman. She's at me night and day. Come in now and sit down. Now it'll be an honor to hear from your own lips about the match. I'm in desperate trouble, Inspector. It's about Mrs. Manning French. I tell you, officer, his dustman came to my house with some fantastic story and then made off with my grandchildren. Then I saw them chasing the children round the garden. And by the time I got out, they'd gone. Mrs. Manning French, would you kindly come this way? Ah, a lot, children. Now stay there. How did it go? It all depends on the old girl. Then I'll see you at the sessions. <laughs> come in, children. a decent, warm-hearted woman. She'd be only too pleased to give you a welcome. Sing it with the twinkle of an eye. 